If you watch part one, then you know what's about to happen. But if not, let me fill you in. So far we've created two systems, a walking AI with hand control and an aimbot for table tennis. And now it's time to combine them together. This is no easy task. You can think of this as an unholy marriage between two people who have nothing in common. There will be a lot of issues, but maybe, just maybe, if they work together, then they might create something beautiful. Let's see if we can solve these issues. The paddle will be held in the ragdoll's right hand, and while the AI has impressive control over it, there is a limit to how far it can reach, so our aimbot's output must stay within arm's reach of the shoulder. The aimbot also requires a set location to plan a strike. Again, the ragdoll's movement's kind of limited, so the AI may not be able to reach it. Instead, we will constantly update the interception point to be half a meter in front of the ragdoll. This does restrict the type of shots it can hit, but it will also help the aimbot suggest shots to the AI that it can actually perform. Finally, we will allow the aimbot to control the angle at which the paddle points. Normally I would give the AI control over this, but I think it's a bit redundant. There's no dynamic system in the wrist, it simply snaps to whatever angle it's given, so there's actually nothing for the AI to learn. The things we've done to our aimbot have now made it ragdoll friendly, but we still need to get our ragdoll to be aimbot friendly. To get our ragdoll to cooperate with the aimbot, we will have to do two things. First, we will set its walking target to be just behind the table. This will keep the ragdoll close to the action and allow it to be flexible in dealing with shots. Second, we will set its hand target to the aimbot's output. We already know that the aimbot's suggestions are safe for the ragdoll to use, so we can be fairly confident that the AI will be able to carry out the shots at once. And surprisingly, that was the last thing we needed to do. Our marriage was successful, and our table tennis player has come together, so all we need to do now is clone it, apply a new paint job, and we can start watching a virtual table t Wait, what? Fun fact about my AI, it can walk perfectly when it's facing forward, but when it's turned around, it collapses in on itself like a dying spider. Now, better programmers than me would probably cut their losses and just retrain the AI, but honestly, I can't be asked. What I'm gonna do instead is trick the AI into thinking it wasn't rotated by flipping its inputs back. There are two types of inputs we need to flip, vectors and quaternions. We can flip vectors 180 degrees by negating the X and Z axes, which is fairly straightforward. Quaternions are a little trickier, the easiest way to flip one is to multiply it with another quaternion which already has that 180 degree rotation. So I did that, and lo and behold, it didn't work. It was at this point that ChatGPT informed me that there are 8 different ways a quaternion can represent the rotation I had. My dumbass AI was only aware of the first way, so when it encountered any of the other forms, it crumbled. I soon discovered that the quaternions I had were in the seventh form, so all I had to do was negate the Y and W axes to revert it back to the original. This simple tweak solved the problem, and the blue AI started working perfectly. We've now run out of things to talk about, and there's two highly skilled AI in front of us itching for a challenge, so let's set them against each other in a best of 21 match.